Duncan, Danny Dubé, you mentioned, and Bakere Mambuza, am I correct? Uh, or is it Mambuza? Uh, yes. They, yes. Um, they were arrested last week, and you said judgment today. And what was the judgment? What, was, uh, what exactly was the result? Is this to deny them bail or to find them guilty of the yes, charges? The judgment. the judgment today was to deny them bail. Actually, when you follow the court proceedings for last week, it's, all, it, it's really upsetting what we are made to hear today when the judge said, after so many days, the judge then said, uh, bail has been deprived to our people. It is really so sad. The nation is so angry and everybody is saying, where is the, the, the need for peace when our people are being persecuted by the state? Everybody is asking that question. Actually, people are saying, Honorable Gauzela, why are you saying we must be peaceful when the government is brutal on us? It's so sad. Actually, no one can convince the emotions of our people to cool down any longer, uh, taking into consideration what the government is doing to the representative of the people. Because we must be clear here, even all these arrests, they are not genuine arrests. It's just a way of suppressing dissenting views in the country as well. Yeah, so, so we're in a situation where three MPs, uh, two are in jail, they've been denied bail. My understanding uh, um, of the charges, am I correct, it's charges of terrorism? Please explain. Oh yes, uh, we, must, we must understand that the three of us, we did something that, has never, that was never done in the Swatini Parliament. We, we told the whole Parliament that our people outside are calling for a government that will be elected by the people as opposite to this government that is always appointed by the king, which then ends up or turns out to be a conduit for the king, actually whatever decisions that are taken by this government that is appointed uh, by the king. They don't cover the interests and uh, the aspirations of the people. We have said many things that education is not for free in Switzerland. If you don't have 6,000, you cannot go to form 1, form 2. Uh, health is just yeah. something else. Yes, yes. Everything so that belongs to them, yes. So you've been calling for, for sort of pro-democracy reforms. Uh, the government clearly believes uh, that the three of you have a case to answer uh, for potentially creating violence. They have said that protesters have been very violent and very destructive. There is a warrant for your arrest, I understand. But first of all, what is your response uh, to the accusations uh, against you and the two former MPs? Were you involved in any way in the violence uh, the violence that, that occurred in May. May, may the world know very clearly that uh, these charges that were have been laid against these three MPs, if I would say so, are all false. Actually, the government is trying to hide the fact that we are being persecuted for making it clear that people are fed up with this government that is being appointed. That's the real position that is here. People are fed up with this government and people want a government that will be elected by them. So these are just means by the government to suffocate all the dissenting voices. On the issue of the violence, it is very clear. People were delivering petitions and the government decided to ban petitions which were constitutional rights of the people. And after banning those petitions, then people were so frustrated and they ended up being violent. And for me, what comes first is the over 70 people who were shot and killed by armed soldiers of the state. For me, what comes first is the over 150 people who are injured as we speak. Some of them are walking with bullets in their bodies from the state. I've never seen such violence in this era of the 21st century. That's what the world must know, that people are, are killed by armed soldiers. I mean, unarmed civilians are killed by armed soldiers in Swaziland. I wanted to ask about the warrant. Their, their, their request I, I just wanted to jump in, sorry, and ask you about. Sorry, I just wanted to jump in and ask you about the warrant uh, for your arrest. Uh, are you planning to hand yourself over? I've made it clear countless times that uh, what comes first to me now is to push the liberation of our people, because I understand the government wants wants me to be in there and now they want me to rot in their cells for no reasons, or as they are pursuing their issue of suffocating all the dissenting voices. I said to them, okay, it's not a problem, I will come, but for now, I'm 
is it mobilizing our people to rise against this dictatorial government, number one. Number two, I'm busy mobilizing the international community to get the best picture or the true picture of what is really happening in the country. After I'm done with that, I'll then go there, when knowing very well that the world knows what's happening in Swaziland and the people of Eswatini are up and demanding properly the, the, the rightful government that we deserve. I hear you. So, um, I presume you're not in Eswatini at this time? May I not say if I am in Eswatini or I am not in Eswatini, but let me say I am here just requesting the international organizations. I am here requesting all the people of the world and the people of Eswatini to please come together and deal with this inhuman situation that is faced by, by, by the ordinary Swazi on the ground. And the, the issue of liberating our people, giving them a situation whereby we will be like other countries and be able to have a government that is elected, not a government that is appointed. Mm. <laughs> for, for a South African watching this, you know, we are neighbors, but I want you to explain uh, to our South African viewers why it's important that we care about what happens in Eswatini. My dear, let me bring in two points. Number one, so the South African people, I know they are truly, they are truly affected by what is happening in Eswatini. And I can, I can say that Grannies from Swaziland, I'm sure they are finding ways to get into South Africa and earn the, those grants that are enjoyed by the people of South Africa because they are suffocated back home. That's number one. That means the economy of, of South Africa is affected when, 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 when this uh, dictatorial state in Swaziland is busy looting the people's funds. Number two, many students from Swaziland are crossing illegally. Uh, to, to South Africa to steal the education of the South African people. That also tells South Africa that either ways you need to come in and assist us. I must also say that all those uh, uh, hospitals that are around the, the border between Swaziland and South Africa, I will call each other Juba or what. I'm sure if you go to them, you'll find that most of the people who are treated there are people that are crossing illegally from Swaziland to come and find help in South Africa. Because in Swaziland, the health infrastructure is in tatters. Maybe lastly, I must say to you that the people of South Africa must remember very well that during those tough years, the people of Swaziland are the ones that took care of them. The people of Swaziland are the ones who were housing those people who are fighting for freedom in South Africa, I think it is time the people of South Africa stand up and say, we cannot sit down and relax when our neighbors are being so, suffocated by those in Duduzi Simulani, you're an MP. You uh, say that you are not going to hand yourself over. Uh, you would rather work to, to essentially force democratic change in Eswatini. Are you committed to non-violent solutions only? I'm very much committed to, to non-violence. Actually, I'm a strong believer. It is only heartbreaking that all our efforts of non-violence, all our efforts of calming the emotions of our people as they're being tortured by the state are, are being watered down. Like I've said even today, you see, I've tried everything, I've done everything to pull our people and plead with the government to do the noble thing and grant our people what they're asking for, which is which at least is time. So in short, let me confirm to you and our people that I strongly believe in non-violence, in peaceful men, but I must say I'm facing pressure as the government I'm dealing with seems not to understand the language of peace. So it is beyond our hands. But I continue to call for peace. I continue to call for non-violence. And I plead with the world to help assist us before we lose it. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much uh, for giving us an update. We have been so occupied in South Africa with the unrest that occurred in July that it is easy to forget that our neighbor is in a very difficult situation. Thank you so much. That is Eswatini MP Mduduzi Similani. He, along with